Well the situation is, I am currently on my way to a stealth camp location. Now what a stealth camp is, is camping without leaving any trace whatsoever and preferably not being detected at all. Now you should check the laws of your country but there are many reasons why you might not want to be detected all of them legal hopefully but in my case it's just that we live very hectic lives and it's nice to come out once in a while and just camp peacefully with no interference whatsoever and just feel like you're the only one there and feel like you own the wood but be careful because your activities will look suspicious to most people and they might see you and you might not see them and their suspicion might cause them to phone the police or the landowner or to get a posse up themselves to come out and find out what's going on. So make sure that what you're doing is within the law. And also expect that if you do get a visit from the law or the landowner that you can explain why you're there and certainly if the authorities turn up you can be expected to be searched so again make sure what you're doing is legal and you're not carrying anything with you that you shouldn't be now in some countries even if it is public land you still may need the permission of either the authorities or whoever oversees that land so in a way we're getting away from stealth camping but uh, you don't want to get caught out now <clears throat> I have stealth camped in various countries over the years where through circumstances my safety has relied upon it so I do know a little bit about the basics which I'll try and cover but at the moment we've got to get on scene because we've only got less than two hours now before the Sun goes down and I've got quite a way to go before I get to my location so I'm going to step up the pace a bit, crack on, and I'll talk to you when I get there. Of course, this bit's not stealthy. I could have gone a route across fields, well, paths running alongside fields. But that would have taken much longer and filming cuts into the time and the sun's not going to wait for me so I've come the most direct route I am now 
fairly close to the area I want to be. And yes, this is giant hogweed behind me. A plant not to be trifled with. So now, I'm just going to stay in this area for a while just to assess the situation get used to the noises any activity and then I'll slowly make my way to where I want to be and we'll start being a little bit more quiet and a little bit more alert So I'll catch you in the wood. Okay, I'm moving into location now. It's a little bit darker in here than the video would suggest. Two disturbing things I found on the way in. They're not rusted at all. Look fairly fresh. Not far to go now. So I'm being a bit quiet. Just getting used to the sounds. Sun's not actually down yet, but we're in the wood. So, opera. I'll press on. Okay then, this is a fairly reasonable location. Now, what I have got to worry about in this area is not so much landowners, but poachers. Because this area is poached and therefore it will be monitored for poaching. So I have got to be a bit careful because we're near, very close, to some syndicate land. So it's important that you can set up quickly and take down quickly if necessary. So I'm just going to do a simple poncho with a bivvy bag. I'm going to put a ridge line from the tree on my right a bush at the back there uh, hopefully you'll see most of that but we are starting to lose the light now the only torch well I've got a mobile phone actually and I can use that as a torch but the only real torch I've got with me is the little solar cell garden lamp which 
would have been better if it was red, but I probably won't be using it unless it's absolutely necessary. Four tent pegs. Ridge line. Prusset loops. Now I'm going to keep the tarp low to the ground. It's starting to get dark now, so it is important to keep a grip of all your kid.
biffy bag in and the sleeping bag. That's the sleeping bag. Biggest thing when you're out still camping is getting used to the noises, the animals. noises okay there'll be no cooking here This is basically just a place to sleep. I do have a meal with me. I've got one and a half litres of water, which is lots of water, because the walk-in was fairly long. So I'm gonna need water through the night, and then I'll need water tomorrow at first light. I'll strike camp, I'll move location, and then I'll cook something for my breakfast. I'm putting everything so if necessary I can make a very quick exit. If needs be, leaving the poncho behind, that would be the last thing I'd leave behind. The sleeping bag and bivy bag can be stuffed in my rucksack in one if there was time to do that. If there wasn't, I'd just exit and as quietly and as quickly as I could and just assess the situation. Now, mozzies could be a problem. For that, I brought my shimag. which is in here, useful for all number of things. From first aid, water filter, filtration if necessary, a flannel, a towel. That's a mobile phone and my secondary camera. That's the half litre of water for tonight. First aid, but it's more than a first aid kit. I would use the stuff in here for regular use, such as the scissors, the tweezers, even the tape. The alcohol fire starting if necessary. I've got a bit of paracord in there. I've got paper and notes in there. I've got a toothbrush, toothpaste and carbolic soap. As well as first aid items such as an Israeli bandage. Blasters sutures, uh, antihistamines. I'll read out the list when it uh, 
perhaps is a bit lighter and I'm off location and can talk a bit louder. Without a fire, the mozzies are starting to home in on, on me now. Uh, so that is a good, good reason to have a fire, but not in this location. Something that I didn't mention when you're selecting your location, as well as it being flat, is you may have noticed when I came in, I crossed a water course. Flooding is something you must take into consideration. And I'm also in an area of large trees, some of which have blown down. So take note of what's above you and what may come down. And alongside that, the weather forecast camera's losing the ability to focus now as the, as the light drops. So I'm going to try and get some sleep because it's not long after the summer solstice so the night is actually quite short and sunrise occurs at about 4.30 so I will be up early so I'm going to get about six hours six hours sleep maybe if I'm lucky so unless there's any disturbances through the night that'll be it until until first light which will occur before 4.30 So that was my stealth camp, I have come out, I'm almost on the path now, not quite. So I went in at dusk and I came out at dawn, it's starting to get a, little, a lot lighter now, it's uh, just gone 10 to 5. So I'm going to have a quick cup of coffee, put the brew on and then I'll make my way home. Now in a way this stealth camp for me was compensation. I would have liked to have gone to the knife show, but uh, that wasn't possible due to the situation at home at the moment. I 
I did bring a fair bit of food with me, but uh, I really don't need to eat. So maybe it's a snack at midday, so for now I'm just going to have a, a coffee. Well, it's this area on my right that uh, I was concerned about the possibility of poachers coming across me or people looking for poachers because this is a private area there's a lake behind there So obviously I would have looked suspicious with the equipment, I'm, well not equipment as such but the pack I'm carrying on my back and the hours that I'm out. So one thing you want to do in stealth camping is not to draw attention to yourself, either by the way you're dressed or your behaviour. <laughs> 